As always, there is much news to cover from the world of tech, including the latest on the U.S. government's war on TikTok. But before we get to any of that, if you watch this show, you know how much we love it when we are introduced to a new weird guy. It's our favorite. And folks, a new weird guy just dropped. Mm. Crypto, NFTs, and general blockchain malarkey has given us many interesting new characters over the years. But that slowed down quite a bit roughly two years ago when the hype around all that stuff collapsed. Fast forward to 2024, though, and crypto prices are suddenly back on the upswing, opening the door once again for crypto weirdos to crawl out of the woodwork and brag about how rich and cool they are for owning crypto and mockingly telling the rest of us to have fun staying poor. Yeah, as we all learned during the last crypto boom cycle, this kind of ostentatious wealth is often exaggerated and serves a very important purpose aside from just self-promotion. We're enjoying life, you know. If only you could bought Filecoin when I mentioned it. Uh, it's pretty tough here. People see someone getting crazy rich off crypto and they think, damn, I should invest in crypto, which makes the value of the tokens and all those JPEGs go up allowing the insiders a better opportunity to sell and leave all those rubes holding the bag. In the absence of actual functionality as currency, crypto remains a multi-level marketing scheme. But again, most of us learned this the first few times around, so when we see someone living an apparently amazing life of luxury thanks to crypto, and this is key, posting about it constantly, we are of course skeptical. Which brings us to NFT Nick, a new character who for the past week has been at war with not only the haters on Twitter doubting his wealth, but also fighting a one-sided war against community notes and responding to a lot of it. Yeah, just uh, he is shaking his fist at the cloud. Yeah, it's a sight to behold. And more than just uh, what's going on, but his face is a sight to he behold. He is an interesting looking fellow. Avian. Wado looking headass. Yeah, so NFT Nick's social media presence seems to have first come to the attention of people outside Twitter's crypto circle jerk with this post from last Thursday. A photo of NFT Nick posing on a boat in front of three other men with the caption, this is who you're trading against. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, initial reactions were, uh, admittedly, mostly just people being mean about NFT Nick's appearance and using the fact that he's a crypto bro as an excuse to just call him ugly and weird looking. <laughs> I mean, it's fair. <laughs> he's the one putting it out there. But then, less than two hours later, still aboard that boat, NFT Nick posted a video that, to crypto outsiders, is utterly incomprehensible, but gives further insight into NFT Nick's whole thing. Yeah. Yo, they said that Moonbirds wasn't acquired. They said cool cast would stay independent. They said Filecoin wasn't a buy at $5. They said D Gods would get a $20,000 airdrop from Wormhole. They said Daniel Allegra is a great CEO. They said Bodagos isn't the top NFT project. Keep down. Look at us now. Okay, so he's got some sort of wannabe gangsta thing going on with his voice and his mannerisms. I would love to see a recording of how this man spoke just five years ago. Uh, it's it's that <laughs> new Dune meme where it's like, use the voice, and then yeah. it's Nick, NFT Nick. Uh, he seems to be reassuring his doubters and haters that he is indeed very cool and very rich. When you keep having to double down like this and argue against community notes, it's, it's definitely... It's a great sign. It, yeah. <laughs> well, the community notes haven't showed up yet. Okay, They yeah. will show up. Mm -hmm. However, it seems that the response to the video was the opposite of what NFT Nick had intended. And NFT Nick returned to Twitter the following day to issue this message, captioned, an important message to the Twitter haters. Crypto Twitter seemed to be amused by my success. I worked hard to buy that yacht. I worked hard to buy this big ass house. Yet you're out there tweeting at me from your tiny little apartment and itty bitty couch. Well, let me tell you, I made a mindset shift. I chose rich every time. So what life are you gonna choose? However, for people whose reaction to the previous video was, that boat is probably a rental, the reaction to this clip was, that house is probably a rental. <laughs> <laughs> NFT Nick clearly wasn't getting through to these no-coiners, these losers. But it would be silly for NFT Nick to let these haters trouble him, given how rich and cool he is. Clearly he has better things to do yeah. than argue online. 
So he posted this later that day to let everyone know he's not mad. In fact, he's actually laughing. Sideways laugh cry emoji. Sounds like you Twitter fools chose pro. Unfortunately, all the broke ass haters simply refused to accept that NFT Nick had won. So NFT Nick returned the following day, Saturday, to restate his case for how cool and rich he is. Yo, cheers to all the Twitter haters who said I don't own my Miami house. I'll have you know I had the staff load up my jet so I could fly out here to my New York City penthouse pied a terre. Anyways, while you're click clacking on Twitter from your mom's basement, I'll be sitting here sipping from my $5,000 bottle of champagne. Remember, choose rich. And this is where the battle turned into a war, not just between NFT Nick and his haters, but also between NFT Nick and Community Notes. The one good thing that remains from Twitter. Yeah, and, and people like to credit Elon for that, but no, it was around before he showed up. Readers added context they thought people might want to know. The bottle Nick is holding does not cost $5,000, and is in fact a bottle of Tattinger champagne that costs less than $85, along with a helpful link proving that that is an $85 bottle Unless of he bought that at a nightclub and then brought it home. I mean, he might have bought it for $5,000. Yeah, someone's getting rich off this guy. Yeah. yeah. But NFT Nick, like all self-made successful men, is not one to back down from a fight. Yo, shout out to the Twitter people praying for my downfall while saying my champagne ain't real. Keep questioning my life while you cry into your TV dinner, and my show four brings me to $3,000 high tea service at Baccarat. Choose rich. This, however, led to something you rarely ever see, a double community note. The first of several. I, I had never seen this before. Mr. But President, a second community note. But you got piece. the community note on the original post, and then someone, quote, retweets their own post that is community noted, and then there's a new community note on the new post, and the new community note reads as follows. Nobody said the champagne was fake, just that it wasn't as expensive as he said. Baccarat tea service is up to $450. It couldn't possibly be $3,000. Looking at the driver and the reflection of his glasses, it seems much more likely to be an Uber slash Lyft rather than a chauffeur. <laughs> He's doing Job from Arrested Development. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, the guy in the, the $7,500 suit? The guy drinking a $5,000 bottle of booze? <laughs> uh, the following day, NFC Nick was back at it again, making the case that he is, in fact, extremely rich and very very cool. Why is everyone doubting me? Come on, just accept it. Yeah. Good morning, haters. Yo, so y'all trying to say that my chauffeur is an Uber driver? Y'all keep hating while I kick off my weak screen at Scarface from my private movie theater in my New York City pied a terre. Remember, choose rich. Okay, yeah. <laughs> private movie theater. That's pretty impressive. Oh, but what's that? Another community note? It is visible in the camera lens that my private movie theater is not, in fact, his nor much private. It is a shared screening room within Brooklyn Point, which doubles as a performance space, giving residents and their guests the opportunity to showcase their talents. Okay, now this is kind of funny, because living in a luxury condo tower in New York City with its own screening room that residents can rent out is, in fact, a great flex. Yeah. You gotta be doing somewhat okay to even have an apartment in New York I mean, City. He could just be someone's guest, but it's yeah. still a flex. Yeah. Even without going above and beyond to right. somehow prove that. Uh, it's just not your own movie theater. No. Except, uh-oh, here comes NFT Nick with the rebuttal. The community notes haters are back in full force saying, this is from a shared theater. Nice try. The architect used my theater as inspiration because it's so baller. Try harder. Choose rich. Wait. So he's saying that the photo he took was in his home movie theater, his private movie theater, and that the photos of the movie theater in that condominium tower in New York City, which mm -hmm. show the exact same theater, are actually someone that copied the exact design of his home theater to put... Oh, okay. Yeah, wow. It was This guy actually is pretty cool. Holy so shit. incredible that they ha just had to recreate it in New York City of all places. <laughs> So the following day, day six of NFT Nick's daily war on his haters slash community notes brought us yet another video captioned, Good morning, haters, from my helipad. Good morning, haters. I'm about to hop on my helicopter to board my private jet for a meeting in Los Angeles. 
Next thing y'all gonna tell me is I don't own my helicopter and that the pilot ain't my full-time employee, Sergio. Drew's rich. And here's the community note. Nick is claiming that this is his helipad. However, a quick look around Google Maps shows that this helipad is owned and operated by Manhattan Helicopters. He's got a timeshare on this helipad. I mean, look, we're he, getting a yeah. little bit pedantic at this point. Yeah. Regardless of whether he owns a helicopter, he did call it his helipad, which would be factually incorrect. Mm -hmm. But I assume if you... There's a lot of... I'm, I assume there's lots of helicopter owners in New York City who don't own... The helipad. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's a weird thing to claim because I would assume that like even if you have like a sharing thing with a with a helicopter, you'd be like, a rich person would say, my helicopter. Because they're using it whenever they want. Yeah. It's just, you know, probably split between a bunch of people. Sure. But to but to claim the helipad my when it helipad. lands on, yeah. that would be such an outrageous thing to spend money on. Yeah. When clearly you're living such an active life it was, that you're never using hey, it's it. It's outrageous for you. Oh, yeah. And all you poor no-coiner haters. Yeah, that's not right. outrageous for a man of immense wealth like NFT Nick. Two things are, well, both of these things are whatever, but he's either faking everything, which yeah. could be true, or someone is fleecing this dude for every last little yeah. Dogecoin he has. I, yeah. And good for them. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean, he almost got away with this one. NFT Nick, you almost had it, but you had to call it your helipad. Mm -hmm. You had to go and embellish things. But still, if, if he owns his own helicopter, there's no denying that NFT Nick is very rich and very yeah. cool. So a few hours later, NFT Nick shared this clip of him aboard his helicopter with the caption, scoping out the haters from my helicopter. All right. But by God, by God, what is that? That is, that's community notes music. Shortly after the video in the QT was posted, a helicopter owned by Charm Aviation, a tour operator, and which is the same model and color as the one Nick claimed was his, took off for a 20-minute round trip. It is likely Nick was just on a sightseeing flight for tourists. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, this is all publicly available information <laughs> oh, flight records. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you think I could put on those headphones so I could look like this is mine? I mean, I think they make everyone wear the headphones. I know, I know, but like, it, it, it is funny... It's like he he bought the picture package that mm -hmm. comes with it or something. Next, he's going to be like at the top of the Empire State Building and be like, y'all checking out my new building? Yeah. <laughs> King Kong leases it from me. He should go to the Queen Mary and be like, check out my new yacht. Have you seen my new, my new boat? So, yeah, yeah. They're really roasting this man in the community notes. Mm -hmm. And NFT Nick is, he's getting upset. Yeah. So it's finally time to ask to speak to the manager. Now the community notes haters are saying this was a tour flight? This is one of my seven helicopters I purchased with my countless Bitcoin. When will it stop at Elon Musk? We need to stop the poor from falsely attacking us. Choose rich. And here's the community note. Community notes aren't used to attack rich people. They are used to debunk and demonetize false posts and provide context that may have been missed or avoided in the posts they're written for. Nick is just upset that he keeps getting noted. <laughs> yeah. Noted! And finally, here we are on day seven of the NFT Nick saga. And it doesn't seem like it's ending anytime soon, but here's NFT Nick's final post before we recorded this episode. Good morning, haters. I'm in my Lamborghini, heading back from my Malibu surf session to my Bel Air mansion that the haters will say ain't real. Anyways, I got a lot to catch you up on, but for now, stay away from those haters and choose rich. Okay, it does seem a bit odd to brag about driving a Lamborghini and not actually show the car, and yep, there it is. The vehicle in the video is not a Lamborghini, as all Nick is claiming. Based on the reflection in the glasses at various parts of the video, it looks to be a 2021 Mazda CX-5. The various sources below verify this. Which, it's a fine car. It's not a Lamborghini, yeah. but there's nothing wrong with driving a Mazda CX-5. And you would have gotten away with it if it weren't for those ridiculous glasses all the time. I know, the glasses have been giving them away uh, half the time. It's those glasses. Uh, well, NFT Nick, of course, not taking this well. <laughs> are you kidding me? The community note haters are saying my car isn't real. I had my staff throw a Mazda logo on the steering wheel just to test them. Jokes on the armchair quarterbacks who don't own a single Bitcoin. Stay broke! This is like that uh, that conservative Twitter account where it's like 
This has to be, everything has to be fake. Nick Adams? Yes. They're both Nicks. <laughs> yeah. What is up with the Nicks in America? Yeah. So we got to do something about these Nicks. Yeah. It's weird. So yeah, okay. They, uh, it's, it's, it is a Lamborghini. There's just a Mazda logo. What do you, shut up. The NFT Nick is either a pathological liar who is not actually good at lying, mm -hmm. like just terrible at lying, or he thinks he's now pivoting to being in on the joke yeah. and telling just like absurd lies just for the attention. He's getting more attention from getting called out on his lies than he ever got just being NFT Nick yeah. uh, posing on his boat with his three he is a, friends. A, addicted so, to the views. Yeah, I mean, this is this guy is uh, this guy is getting roasted by mm -hmm. thousands of people, but uh, people like him. Yeah, at a certain point, attention is attention. Yeah, and it does seem like he's leaning into this, which is pathetic, but also makes it less fun. Yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess we'll see. I, he doesn't show that, any signs of stopping. With all that money, it, it figure out a way to. Change that face. Yeah. <laughs> you said it. But yeah, whether he's just a really bad liar or he thinks he's in on the joke now, it, it ain't working mm. either way. And that's where we leave off for today. If NFT Nick continues posting through it, we will be sure to update you on that. And he shows no signs of stopping, so... Yo, what yeah. up, haters? I'm in, my, I'm in one of my seven helicopters. With, you know who that is? That's, that's Princess Kate Middleton. Yep. She's hanging out with me now. <laughs> This guy reminds me, fuck, I cannot. Prince think. William said to take her on a helicopter ride. I don't know what that means, but here she is. There's this other dude that I cannot think of his name. Someone in the comments will know. But he's this dude that wears like a lot of like, wears like guy liner and um, he has like a really weird beard and fuck. He is just always claiming to be rich, even mm. though it's been debunked multiple times. Mm. Uh, Fuck, you'll let us know in the comments. But it's yeah. it's a similar phenomenon where this other guy I'm talking about is just like not a single person is like, hey, wow, you're really cool. Everyone's making fun of him. And he just like has kept at it for years. Yeah, I mean, some people are into that. <laughs> uh, and also like this is a, I don't know how old this guy is. He could be 70 or, thir or 30 or 20. I, I don't know. It's a very... Ageless in yeah. a very strange way. Uh, but it, it is kind of like that fake it till you make it thing, especially in the crypto space. It, yeah, they're all faking. They're all they're all putting on a show because again, it's like the, it, when you break it down to its parts, it is a multi-level marketing scheme. Yeah, and the this, only way any of these people, even if they are rich already, the only way they stay rich is if they're constantly promoting the lifestyle that their Bitcoin riches have brought them. And and building an audience big enough to promote random shit coins and NFTs. Like this guy's yeah. probably getting airdropped some stuff from companies in order to be like, hey, this is what I'm getting rich off of. He runs a, he has an NFT collection of like, basically it's like your your uh, crypto punks or your bored apes, but his are like cartoon dogs. Okay. And they're, they, they suck. Um, it is kind of funny that the rise of generative AI has kind of just decimated the, whatever was left of the NFT movement because now there's just no point. Like, there's not even an art aspect to it or anything. I mean, that was already yeah. pretty close to the case. But yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's Dover. It's, yeah. uh, it's Jover, baby. It's Jover. Mm -hmm. Anyway, welcome to the Rogues Gallery, NFT Nick. It is always a joy discovering a new main character. Mm -hmm. And you have quickly risen the ranks and won over our hearts and the viewers' hearts, I'm sure. Hey, at the very least, it's entertaining. <laughs> it is. I had a real blast scrolling through this man's timeline over the past few days. But... Let's now move on to a story that's way less entertaining, but much more consequential, um, I guess. Mm. The U.S. government versus TikTok. And things are moving pretty fast. Faster than the government has ever moved wow, before. Wow, they really got a skip in their step when shit like this is happening. Yes, uh, rare bipartisan support, get everything getting shoved through. It looks like the government can actually work yeah. when it's something they really the want to get done. The government is only inefficient when it means helping you. Yes. <laughs> In any other aspect, years, years to get anything done. So here's CBS News. The House on Wednesday passed legislation that could ban TikTok in the U.S. if its Beijing-based parent company, ByteDance, doesn't sell its stake in the massively popular social media platform. The vote was 352 in favor and 65 opposed, underscoring its broad bipartisan support, with 197 Republicans and 155 Democrats voting to approve it. 15 Republicans and 50 Democrats voted against the bill. 
one Democrat voted present. The House fast-tracked the legislation, known as the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications Act. Did we ever figure out what they were trying to go for with that? No. By bringing it up under a procedure that required the support of two-thirds of the members for passage. The bill now goes to the Democratic-controlled Senate, where it faces a decidedly less certain future. Majority Leader Chuck Schumer of New York was non-committal about bringing it up for a vote, saying in a one-line statement that the Senate will review the legislation when it comes over from the House. So yeah, the government really, really wants TikTok gone. Mm -hmm. It's one of the few things they can seem to find any bipartisan consensus on, which is cool. That's great. Mm, yeah. But will it work? Well, here's more from the article about how this isn't quite a done deal yet. The House bill is likely to face obstacles in the Senate, where a bipartisan effort last year to restrict TikTok petered out. Some senators are hesitant to focus on just one social media platform, saying it violates the First Amendment. Earlier in the week, Senator Mark Warner of Virginia, the Democratic chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, told reporters that he had concerns about naming a specific company in legislation. In a statement after the House vote, however, Warner and GOP Senator Little Marco Rubio, the Intelligence Committee's vice chairman, said they were encouraged by today's strong bipartisan vote in the House of Representatives and look forward to working together to get this bill passed through the Senate and signed into law. Senate Commerce Committee Chair Maria Cantwell, whose panel would likely have to approve a measure restricting TikTok, suggested it could run into problems. I will be talking to my Senate and House colleagues to try to find a path forward that is constitutional and protects civil liberties, the Washington Democrats said in a statement after the vote. So yeah, there would seem to be some issues here, similar to the issues that Donald Trump faced when his administration tried to ban TikTok. It, it's tricky. Laws that very clearly target one specific company, it's not how things are usually done, and for good reason. And speaking of Trump, you'd think he would be thrilled about TikTok getting banned. But then you remember, he doesn't have any principles aside from the love of winning. And TikTok getting banned under Joe Biden wouldn't be winning. Similar to how shutting down the U.S.-Mexico border under Joe Biden wouldn't be winning. So last Friday, Trump posted to Truth Social. If you get rid of TikTok, Facebook and Zucker schmuck <laughs> yes. will double their business. I don't want Facebook, who cheated in the last election, doing better. They are a true enemy of the people. Zucker schmuck. Ooh, that's a good one. He He's still got it. Yeah. Uh, he then reiterated this in a CNBC interview, again, focusing on Facebook, who he seems to believe will try and steal the election from him or something, which I think he has his wires crossed because Facebook was a, not entirely, but a, a nice shove in the right direction for his first win. Yeah. Facebook, if nothing else, like, first of all, the company itself is pretty non-ideological. They just like data and money. And I would say just, Objectively, you are much more likely to be shown uh, conservative brain rot on Twitter than you are Facebook. Or sorry, Facebook. Well, both now. Than uh, than the other way around. Mm -hmm. Like so many fucking people during COVID were radicalized into being QAnon anti-vaxxers on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Now he he just wants to be contrarian. He doesn't want not that this is not a win. I'm not putting it that way, but in some people's eyes, this is a win. But also courting the 170 million Americans who use the app on a daily basis. Yeah, I mean, this is like, uh, I don't think they understand how many people are going to be fucking pissed yeah, if this happens. It's a little strange. Like, especially also, like, like the, we should say this again because we have to say it every time in case someone's watching this episode and hasn't seen our previous stuff. All social media should yeah. be regulated in the sense that your data privacy should be more respected right. than it currently is. They haven't been able to, and it's been long enough that I feel like they should have had something by now. They haven't been able to prove that TikTok is like Chinese spyware no. that they're using to, you know. Take, there is no evidence. Take, yeah, yeah, it's, but we do know that they, their app collects obscene amounts of data. Yeah. But so do all the other social media apps. And, and you can just buy that data from yeah. data brokers, no problem. So, so it's, uh, yeah. Maybe we should regulate the entire industry and protect all U.S. citizens' data. Uh, those are American companies. Yeah, homegrown. So. Anyways, Trump definitely has a slight point about how banning TikTok will mostly just serve to benefit Meta. That's true. Like, Instagram is the closest thing to TikTok, yeah. and it would presumably get a huge influx of users in the event that TikTok goes down. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as you'd expect, Trump is right for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> 
This is uh, pretty much always the case when he's right about anything. Mm -hmm. uh, the Washington Post points out that a guy named Jeff Yass, a billionaire Trump donor, owns a $40 billion stake in TikTok's parent company, ByteDance. Yass is the largest donor to the conservative organization Club for Growth, who has been paying Kellyanne Conway to lobby Republicans not to ban TikTok, including by showing Trump a bunch of graphs and shit indicating that a lot of his diehard fans use TikTok to spread the gospel of MAGA. Hmm. So, yeah, there's all that, but it still probably just mostly boils down to not wanting Joe Biden to get credit for something that Trump himself tried and failed to do. Yeah, and uh, Biden, to his detriment, in my eyes, just like, yeah, put it on my desk, I'll sign it. It's like, sir, you literally just opened a TikTok account like last month. Yeah. It, what, what, what's, which one do you believe? Like, also, again, just regulate all of it. If there was yeah. data protections across the industry, it'd probably be a lot easier well, yeah, to nip these things in the bud when they pop up. It is really obvious, like none of it's in the, the text of the bill, nor very much in the hearings about it, but like comments from a lot of the bit players in the US Congress who support this very strongly indicate that they just don't like the young people using it and learning about like trans people and LGBTQ issues and, and Palestine. What's, what's actually happening yeah, on the ground. It's literally, Gaza, yeah. they, they fully believe that the Chinese are turning all the kids gay and making them hate Israel. Yes. Uh, it is also <laughs> wild that like that that one GOP guy was like, I don't know, it seems like targeting one company. Uh, I don't know if we should. And then it's like, I brought a tear to my eye. <laughs> People were reaching across the aisle. We yeah. all came to, you know what? We, we should pass this. I mean, you can't, like, really, any time... The U.S. Congress is uh, bipartisan about anything. That is a fucking red flag. Yeah, it's, like, exactly, like, yeah. it's never anything good. Mm -hmm. It's like, let, let's invade Iraq. Oh, yeah, we can all reach across the island. Yeah. Have a big kumbaya group hug about invading Iraq. Yeah. And but, then, uh, uh, you know, getting you health care and, uh, you know, making sure you don't die on the streets. Going to take a little longer. Yeah. Uh, anyways, another surprising opponent of the TikTok ban is Elon Musk. I guess it's not super surprising considering his stated commitment to absolute free speech. But Musk also has a tendency to be very selective about the free speech that he thinks is worth defending. More on that later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on Tuesday, Musk quote tweeted a post from Republican Representative Thomas Massey, which called the TikTok ban a Trojan horse, saying, This law is not just about TikTok. It is about censorship and government control. If it were just about TikTok, it would only cite foreign control as the issue. But it does not. And yeah, he's not wrong that this could be a very slippery slope. But it's also funny to remember that Elon's wealth is increasingly dependent on both U.S. government contracts for SpaceX rockets and Tesla's success in China, which puts him in a very interesting position <laughs> yeah. here. Wait, hold on. You're saying that someone who is uh, very much financially entangled with China is a national security risk? That meme of like no. the eyes going the <laughs> yeah. opposite directions. Whoa! <laughs> but yeah, it is. It's very interesting in uh, Elon's uh, p politics arc, where he has fucking opinions on everything. He has said n almost nothing about China, and when he has said stuff about China, it's been very neutral. Yeah, which is interesting because I, I assume a lot of the people who uh, you know enjoy conservative Elon Musk have very strong opinions about China, yeah. which he. Does not seem to share because they're buying his cars. It's the only market, really, that he has left to really expand in. Mm -hmm. And he needs this to fucking work. And setting up a car company in China requires uh, a lot of cooperation with the Chinese government. So um, They should shut him down. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. the fact that, like, I, I feel like NASA at this point, they're just like, fuck, we can't design our own rocket. Like, they, we'd lose, like, decades we really fucked up uh, turning this into a public-private partnership mm -hmm. instead of just continuing to do what we were always doing. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh. Anyways, in the absence of any definitive proof that China is up to something with TikTok, aside from making a ton of money, it's hard to take this latest push to ban TikTok very seriously. And 404 Media published a piece this week about this weird double standard for foreign and domestic tech giants that's really worth a full read. Uh, links down below. But this section here really gets to the heart of why this all feels so fucking dumb. Yeah. TikTok and the specter of China's control of it has become a blank canvas for which anyone who has any complaint about social media to paint their argument on. 
and has become a punching bag receiving scrutiny we should also be applying to every other social media giant. When Uber, Airbnb, DoorDash, and Bird ignore local laws or face the specter of bans or regulation, they use push notifications, email, and pop-ups within their apps asking customers to complain to legislators. When these American apps do this, they are simply leveraging their popularity to mobilize users. When TikTok does the same, it is Chinese interference in American politics. When American TikTok users use their platform to share their progressive or leftist politics and TikTok's algorithms allow them to go viral, that's Chinese interference. When TikTok deletes content that violates its terms of service, that's Chinese censorship. When Facebook and Google allow advertisers to create psychographic, biographic, and behavioral-based profiles of their users to target ads to them, that's personalized advertising. When TikTok does ads, it's Chinese spying. When TikTok users see content that promotes suicide, eating disorders, and makes people feel bad about themselves, it's China brainwashing our children, undermining America, and threatening our existence. When Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube users see the same, it's inconvenient and unfortunate, but can be solved with a blasé spokesperson statement that these platforms care about safety and will strive to do better. Yeah, it's... It, I just can't take this... I can't take this seriously as anything more than... Um, Red baiting, uh, just oh, we gotta, we gotta, you know, America loves a war. They, the, we were, we were so united during the Cold War under Reagan. We need mm -hmm. to bring some of that spirit back. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the USSR is gone, but we've got China, mm -hmm. uh, a country we are heavily uh, involved in economically to the point where uh, a war with would destroy both countries. Mm -hmm. But we can do the song and dance about you know being in a Cold War with them, and we can get people from both sides of the aisle on board and feel united as a country, and um, pretend that all the other bad things, well, they're not so bad. Yeah. Because the Chinese are invading your children's phones. That's right. They only hate you and the grandparents because of the TikTok, not for any other self-imposed reasons. Yeah. They hate us for our freedom. <laughs> That's right. My son doesn't talk to me because he's on the TikTok learning about why I'm such an asshole. I mean, that day. is like, I'm sure millions of people in this country genuinely believe that once TikTok gets deleted from their kids' phones, everything will be fine. Their kids will, uh, it'll be just like when their kids were four years old and everything was happy and we could go to the park and I could push you on the swing. This is such bullshit because everyone <laughs> who's a parent now grew up with the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, millennials are the parents now. Like, Gen X is starting to become grandparents. They had the internet too. Yeah. So. Some, some millennials are grandparents. Lauren Bovert. That's right. Millennial grandma. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have more news coming right up, but first, we got to tell you this episode is sponsored by Factor. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. Fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day like breakfast, midday bites, and more. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash newsday50 and use code newsday50 to get 50% off. That's code newsday50 at factormeals.com slash newsday50 to get 50% off. This episode is also sponsored by Shopify. You probably already know them. You probably already love them. It's Shopify, the best platform for shopping, hosting your own business, and keeping track of all your shipments in one place. There are a ton of amazing duos out there in the world. Hey, look at us. Perfect example. But the best duo is, of course, Shopify and you. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million order stage? Shopify's there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. 
No matter how big you want to grow, Shopify gives you everything you need to take control and take your business to the next level. We love Shopify's simple and easy to use app because it keeps track of all of your online shipments. You can even connect other platforms so that your tracking is all in one place. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US and Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's and Brooklinen and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's extensive help resources are there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash newsday, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash newsday now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash newsday. Back to the news now with another social platform, one that we actually use, yeah. unfortunately, mm. Twitter, the platform currently known as X. Unbeatable. Uh, that's where I go for all my Kate Middleton news. That's right. They've got <laughs> the most deranged theories. Yeah. You can pause that. If you, a new theory every day. Yeah. Anyway, anyway <laughs> thankfully, there, there's not a lot to report about X, but here's a very funny update to a story from a little while back. Mm -hmm. So you remember back in January when X announced content partnerships with a handful of talking heads who would basically come do what Tucker Carlson's doing? The roster was Tulsi Gabbard, Jim Rome, and Don Lemon. And the Don Lemon selection in particular was touted as proof of Elon Musk's commitment to political neutrality, even though Don Lemon sucks and nobody likes him. <laughs> uh, well, here's your update via The Verge. Elon Musk canceled Don Lemon's show on X over some interview questions Musk didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lemon says that Musk terminated their partnership just hours after a tense interview between him and the platform's owner. Lemon doesn't say what exactly transpired during his interview, but he does say that Musk is mad at him. Throughout our conversation, I kept reiterating to him that although it was tense at times, I thought it was good for people to see and hear our exchange and that they would learn from our conversation, Lemon says in a video posted to X. Lemon adds that there were no restrictions on the interview that he willingly agreed to, and my questions were respectful and wide-ranging covering everything from SpaceX to the presidential election. Musk says he canceled the show because it was too much like CNN. Fake news. He didn't comment on the interview questions. Uh, yeah. The I love free speech. Yeah, yeah. Like, he loves free speech so much that when someone who isn't just completely lost in the sauce about him asks him questions that are actually direct about the many controversial things about them, yeah. uh, he immediately terminates their contract. Once again, just repeating things that he said and say, Elaborate on this. I mean, Don Lemon seems to be loving this because this... It's great for Don Lemon. This just turned into like a big story for him. That's what's fucking weird about it. It's like if you're Elon Musk, this is a flash in the pan interview. Yeah, let the show die. No you've, one was going to watch this you've shit. You've said way weirder things in the past couple of weeks and months mm -hmm. than anything that's going to show up on this. Why would you want to draw so much attention to it? Yeah. It's it's a video going up on a platform not optimized for video. I doubt anyone and would have been able to even find it. And not optimized for anything at this point besides extreme conservative viewpoints. And and porn bots saying pussy in bio. Yeah. Like, the responses to this video were all going to be, like, Elon stands just bashing them. Instead, now he's got, like, an international stage because there's been such an yeah. uproar. He was back on CNN today yeah. talking about it. <laughs> it is literally the most, like, Streisand effect thing in recent memory, aside from, well, Kate Middleton. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Don Lemon later clarified things a bit further on a CNN <laughs> interview back at his old stomping grounds. Hey, welcome uh, back, buddy. With uh, He's on the Aaron Burnett show where he shared some clips from the interview. Uh, here's the Daily Beast. Hate speech on the platform is up. Do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? That you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the great replacement theory as it relates to, Lemon asked before Musk replied, I don't have to answer these questions, <laughs> Musk said. I don't have to answer questions from reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Otherwise, I would not do this interview. Lemon followed up. Do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble or you wouldn't be criticized for these things? Musk replied that he's criticized constantly and that he couldn't care less. Yeah, Musk doesn't care about this totally the, same doesn't way, care. the same way NFT Nick doesn't yeah. care about the community notes. <laughs> He's uh, actually laughing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for a guy who couldn't care less, it is certainly odd that he went ahead and terminated Don Lemon's ex-partnership right after that interview ended. Interesting. Concerning. Also, very amateurish for Don Lemon to not get a contract before doing all of this. 
Uh, the contract guys were all fired uh, last year. It's, uh, we do things a little... X is the everything app. Everything except contracts. You know, you at, at one point, you got to wonder why Don Lemon just trusted Elon Musk that he was going to get a fully funded show on X. I mean, I think Don Lemon was in a position where he didn't have a whole lot of uh, options. Sure. But, yeah, it is just odd that... Uh, it's odd in many angles, but also because Elon assumed that he was going to get like a softball interview. Yeah, it's very strange. Like, hey, we're doing literally going to do a quid pro quo, right? And when that didn't happen, he put a halt to everything. Yeah. And now it's going to get way more traction than it ever would have. I don't have to answer your question. Critical support for Don Lemon. Uh, anyways, in other X news, Elon's commitment to arbitrarily changing things about the platforms in ways that nobody likes continues. Here's Gizmodo. In a series of tweets on Wednesday, Musk announced that like, retweet, and favorite counts would be disappearing from the main feed on his social media network, now called okay. X, in a future design change. At first glance, there doesn't appear to be a profound reason behind this. Instead, Musk simply wants to make the feed cleaner. The news came by way of the Doge designer, or CB Doge, an X power user and Musk ally. And possibly Elon Musk himself. Almost certainly one of his many accounts. Doge Designer said that soon, users will have to click on the post to view these metrics. Musk confirmed the plan in a reply, stating that only view counts will be shown. Very clean, Musk <laughs> said in another reply to Adrian Dittman. I've been dying to do this for a year. The billionaire went on to state that the view count, the only visible metric for engagement on posts, will be moved to the upper right <laughs> of the post next to the timestamp. Okay. To engage with the post in this new design, users will have to swipe right to reply and swipe <laughs> left to favorite. Shut the fuck up. What is going on with this guy? It's cleaner. This is just like when he removed the text from news articles. Yeah. And then... Ah, like, perfect. Uh, yeah, a month later, it was like, um, we've moved the text to uh, the top of the thumbnail instead of the bottom. This is a brand new uh, brand new thing just drops. I feel You're like he's, he's doing it to like drive metrics because in order to like see the data on something, you have to click it again and view it again. So he's like, yeah. we can easily double all of our metrics with this one simple People trick. will be spending twice as much time on... On Twitter, now that they have to like click around to oh. see just this information that used to be right there on screen. Unfortunately, Musk is gonna his mind's gonna be blown when he sees the number of regrettable user minutes go up. Yeah, and the unregretted user minutes go down because they're just clicking around on things they've already seen. Well, you remove all this extraneous uh, this this stuff at the bottom of each post, you now fit like way more posts on screen. And so, if you have a, a, a click farm with just a robot finger scrolling like this, uh, all of those posts are going to get so many more views and the advertisers now have yeah. uh, higher view counts. Side note, it has gotten so much, it, like the, the whole blank in bio thing obviously is very annoying. A lot of those are hidden. But the thing that has really bothered me lately is, okay, first of all, when you click on a tweet, nothing makes sense under the tweet. It's yeah. a bunch of different tweets or ads or whatever. So it's very confusing to see an actual conversation based on the tweet you're looking at. But when you do find the conversation based on that tweet, it is very clearly a bunch of fake accounts that are just replying with chat GPT analyzing yeah, whatever the tweet says. It's bots says. talking to each other. It's literally like, yeah. I, it, it's probably Grok because it's probably yeah. built into it. But it's, it's, a, it's a bunch of chat bots replying to each other. Yeah. Because the responses don't make sense from a human emotional standpoint. Yeah. It's... Um... Literally just restating what the uh, original tweet said, but worded slightly different, or yeah. like, or just pulling up like the Wikipedia yeah, definition yeah. of like something. Yeah, it's it's very weird. It's and so obvious. obvious. It's. Do we talk about uh, Linda's video thing in here? No. It's, what? it's incredible. She's like, X videos is the best platform. <laughs> you know, whatever. And then the then everyone the one guy specifically posted the entirety of the movie Airheads. Oh yeah, as yeah. a reply, like you're right, Linda. Here you go. It's my favorite. My favorite recurring gag is people uh, just posting full movies. As of this morning, that was still up, and it had like right. five hundred thousand views. Because the the DMCA guy got fired two years ago, and uh, probably that, no one those chasing emails down, like, just, the they just get bounced either, back. Yeah, great movie. You should watch it for free on X. <laughs> yeah. But basically, no one but the most dedicated Musk dick riders approved of this idea to hide all those numbers, which even Musk could not justify, aside from saying it makes the site look cleaner. That's why I took the door handles off of the Teslas and uh, subsequently may have trapped May have Mitch killed McConnell's Mitch McConnell's sister-in-law <laughs> yeah. in just one of the most horrifying ways to die you can imagine, Yeah, where she accidentally drove her car into a lake, the power went out, and when that happens, 
Uh, there are no mechanical door openers there, inside of a Tesla unless you rip open the fucking speaker panel and pull like a lever a certain way. Yes. And do that while you're stressing out about the fact that you're about to drown. Some of them have them sort of accessible, but you're right. I think the one that she was driving, it is a weird, like you have to pull a panel off as fucking water is filling up your car yeah. and you're, you're at this point, you, she was about to die, but like thinking you're about to die. Also, when I, I guess paramedics showed up while she was still had like a couple inches of water, they, they couldn't get the car open uh, because it's just not, well, that's why it's not designed in a way that's uh, safe. I mean, this is a Tesla problem because of the way the door opens, but in general, it is next to impossible to actually open the door in a car that's sinking, you have to wait until it yeah. th- until it levels out with the water inside. Well, you so have to roll have, the window down yes, or, or crack a, the window. That's why yeah. a lot of people carry the the yeah. thing that breaks the window. But still, she might have lived if she wasn't in that particular car. Who's to well, say? Well, that's a very, very, very rich person that just got killed in a very Tesla-specific accident. So we'll see how that goes. The simple fact remains: much cleaner look. And, and isn't cleaner, it worth it? Cleaner death. Isn't it worth it, folks, for a much cleaner look? But uh, yeah, we look forward to uh, the new Twitter redesign being implemented and then immediately reverted like a day or so later yeah. uh, when everyone complains. Uh, uh, Linda's year is coming up soon. Oh, shit. Yeah, so. We'll see if our theory is correct. <laughs> yeah. That she is... Uh, one and gone. If she hits the one year mark, she gets a bonus payout and then she goes to work literally anywhere else. Yeah. Whoever will take her back at this point. Well, I mean, at this point, it's like she's got to leave as soon as possible because the longer she's here, yeah. the more she's associated with X. Yeah. But yeah, moving on now to the world of AI Ugh. and there is thankfully barely anything to cover this oh, okay. week. Okay. But here's a story about a company whose entire business model is built on non-consensually scraping terabytes of data and images from across the internet, getting mad at a rival company doing that exact thing to them. Here's Ars Technica. On Wednesday, Midjourney banned all employees from image synthesis rival Stability AI from its service indefinitely after it detected botnet-like activity suspected to be a Stability employee attempting to scrape prompt and image pairs in bulk. Midjourney advocate Nick St. Pierre tweeted about the announcement, which came via Midjourney's official Discord channel. Prompts are the written instructions, like a cat in a car holding a can of beer, used by generative AI models such as Midjourney and Stability AI's Stable Diffusion 3 to synthesize images. Having prompt and image pairs could potentially help the training or fine-tuning of a rival AI image generator model. Not for nothing. Another Nick. Another Nick! What's going on? Something's up with the Nicks! Bot activity that took place around midnight on March 2nd caused a 24-hour outage for the commercial image generator service. Midjourney linked several paid accounts with a Stability AI data team employee trying to grab prompt and image pairs. Midjourney then made a decision to ban all Stability AI employees from the service indefinitely. It also indicated a new policy. Aggressive automation or taking down the service results in banning all employees of the responsible company. Siobhan Ball of the Mary Sue found it ironic that a company like Midjourney, which built its AI image synthesis models using training data scraped off the internet without seeking permission, would be sensitive about having its own material scraped. It turns out that generative AI companies don't like it when you steal, sorry, scrape images from them. Cue the world's smallest violin. Yeah, and I've seen this same phenomenon uh, pop up with uh, AI image uh, people who get mad when like, they develop a really good prompt mm. that's like an entire page long of like uh, just the right words to get exact. And then someone else takes that prompt and uses it to make their own image. Just, hey, what the hell? I worked really hard on that prompt. And now you're just using it like it's your prompt. That's messed up, Take man. a creative writing class and actually write a book or something. Yeah, it's... Um, you're doing all the hard work for no reason. But they, they, they really... I mean, so they they understand, they're not incapable of understanding that when you work hard on something, it's uh, it's insulting and, and wrong for yeah. someone else to take uh, your work and use it for their own devices without credit or permission or anything like that. Um, yet they somehow cannot extend that same courtesy to um, the actual artists whose, uh, whose art was necessary to make these algorithms even fucking work in the first place. 
if you're writing like multi-page prompts and proud of it, like you're you're a couple steps away from just actually writing things. Yeah, take an art class. Yeah. You'll you'll have a good time. It, it's it relieves stress. It's great to pick up new skills. Pick up a brush. Yeah. Or Create. If you're not going to pick up a football, pick up a brush. Yeah. Anyways, speaking of AI, uh, we didn't have time to get to it today. We're running a bit long with all those NFT Nick clips. <laughs> but very funny things are happening over at the annual South by Southwest Festival in Austin, which we will definitely be talking about in our next video. Mm -hmm. There's multiple angles to this. It's, it's a shit show. It is. But yeah, basically an event that is equal parts music, movies, and technology. It worked pretty okay for a couple decades. But now that the tech people are actively trying to put the music and film people out of business, things are getting a bit tense. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, the U.S. military is sponsoring the whole event at, and a, at shocker, a time when uh, militarism is, you know, obviously a bit controversial. Shockingly, uh, independent bands uh, have morals that, uh, that yeah. they don't want to be involved with certain things. Um, and that is not working out well for the festival. So, yeah, hopefully we'll talk about that a bit more tomorrow. But for now... If you liked this video, be sure to leave a like. Turn on that bell to get notifications. Yeah. And hey, get a conversation going down in the comments section. Yeah. Uh, uh, tomorrow's episode, I will reveal the top uh, conspiracy theory. There was a lot of good ones in there. But uh, the, the, the top one that I saw earlier this morning was uh, had something to do with George Santos. He, he's, he gets involved. He's, uh, he's got his finger in every pie. <laughs> That's right. And uh, yeah, if you need to catch up, be sure to check out our recent video about weird shit happening with the British royal family. It's getting weirder, folks. And our video about how Sydney Sweeney's jugs just ended wokeness. That's right. Bye.